Faraz, are you ready? I'm fucking ready, baby. Let's, Let's go. go. One, two, three. Well, <laughs> it's a hot day in Vancouver. And today we are having our 16th episode of Bad Decision Podcast. Damn right we are. It is definitely hotter than we expected. We thought that summer in Canada is going to be fine. This is Farad's first summer here in Canada. My second. And the last time we were not doing any podcasts that I was here. So I have never experienced sweating armpits <laughs> while talking for an hour. We're going to experience that for the first time. And although that sounds disgusting, I'm sorry. I'm just being very brutally honest with you. But nonetheless, the podcast still will happen every goddamn week. Because today, we have a very special person, like always, <laughs> like I always, say that. Farah's always say we have a very special guest. But it's true, because today, I mean, I'm not going to even talk about who he is, because Farah's going to do that. But I'll tell you something. This is our first guest. We're bringing somebody that we've known for a very long time. He's a dear friend, and we miss him. And he's just such an amazing person. But that is not the reason he's here. The reason he's here is because he's done such great work in a very specific industry that we're interested in, we're passionate about. So, Farhad, why don't we uh, bring him on? Let's, let's talk about our guest today. Our today's guest is an Australian filmmaker, a YouTuber, a travel vlogger. And if all of that doesn't ring a bell, he is the master of storytelling. He traveled all around the world, Southeast Asia, Europe, Iceland. He lives in Australia, so he's been all over the place. If if you want to pay attention to his work, he's been master of transitions. Whatever random <laughs> shit you name it, he can make a transition he, out of dude, it. Dude, he can make transitions out of everything. You talk about a rice grain, uh, a eyeball, door, an eyeball, a, every anything. freaking thing he can make a transition out of. Our t and beside all of this, of course, he's a longtime friend. Ben TK, welcome to our podcast. How are you doing, bro? Hey, boys. How are you going? It's been a while. Good to see you guys. Man, it's been it's been a pleasure seeing you again. It's been so long. I think the last time me and you met, because like I think you and Farah know each other probably a little bit longer than I did. Uh, but I think the last time I remember I was hanging out with you, I think it was at a bar. We were drinking some beer in Malaysia. I'm not <laughs> sure if I was. I remember that right? Do you remember? Oh, that was, it was six was years ago, right? Uh, oh God, it's on the tip of my tongue. That place, um, Barfly. Yes. What was that? Barfly or something. I think it was in Publica or something. We were we were drinking beer. Uh, that's I think the last time we hang out was that yeah. time. I that's all I remember. What about you guys? I think oh, I, you guys I when I when I when I was living in Australia, I remember the first day when I arrived, I hopped onto his car right after airport. We went to Mount Martha. Do you remember we went cliff jumping? Like the oh, first yeah. day that I arrived. Yeah, that was the first day that I arrived to Melbourne. Oh man, that's such a good uh, that's such a good first day in Melbourne. That was and just right before the lockdowns, right? And then we were like in the lockdowns for like six months. Oh, I know what a crazy time that was. A great time to learn 3D if you were ever getting into it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's you know, funnily enough, you brought that. Up. That's another topic we're going to be covering today because COVID was a time where where all filmmakers had to essentially stay at home and still create. And especially for someone like you, we know this because we watch your videos. Yeah, it's. Must have been a fucking crazy time. Yeah, because like I was a travel filmmaker and everyone was looking forward to me posting travel videos. And then next minute, I'm like, I kind of switched pretty hard to gear reviews because um, I couldn't do anything. So, I mean, I could only just show people what the inside of my house looked like. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody, today we're traveling to the bathroom <laughs> where we have the latest tech. <laughs> I've never been to this corner of the house before. Right? <laughs> yeah different it was hard like i mean subscribers definitely dropped and like views dropped and it was a hard time for everybody a lot of creators actually um you know some people stopped creating content completely because of covid so it was it was mm -hmm. tough for everybody for sure yeah. and how, what are you what are you working on nowadays now that you are you know of course not you know bound to the lockdowns anymore i hope that's not happening anymore in in australia um <laughs> this country i swear to god <laughs> <laughs> so what are you what are you busy with nowadays now that covid's over uh so I've, I've been quite busy just you know a lot of the time i've been trying to figure out what i really really want to do now because um it, it changes all the time like what you're really passionate about um but recently i've been working on just some personal storytelling uh projects like just telling mm. really important moments of my life in like a 10 minute to 13 minute video uh, trying to be, be as raw and realistic as possible, not leaving anything, um, just being as open as I can so people can really see uh, the reality of what 
some people go through within their lives. So I've just been really experimenting with that. And it's been a lot of fun and fulfilling to tell those stories. And they also revolve heavily around travel as well. Now that the lockdowns have ended, we can get out and do things. Um, but yeah, so a lot of uh, personal uh, content like that. And I'm also trying to build a filmmaking course as well, which is, um, it's been a long time in the making um, and I've taken a lot of breaks from it. But looking at <laughs> really how long, How long exactly have you been working on this? I, I actually mentioned I was working on it two years ago. And oh, gosh. To be honest, I haven't done as much as I would have liked to. There's been so much that's pushed me back, like injuries, uh, client projects where I need money, um, and all of that sorts of stuff. So it's been on the back burner for a while. Uh, but th this next month, I'm going to be working pretty hard on it because it needs to come out. And uh, that yeah. Well, that's the reality of it. Uh, you know, there's always things that will come uh, ahead in life and you have to have your priorities. Uh, there was the story of how you started that we wanted to talk about. But before that, because you brought up, you know, the fact that you're now working more on personal uh, content, content that is personal to you, your personal storytelling. There's one thing that I had to mention. We were watching one of your videos with Farhad that you've done recently after COVID. And you went... Full raw. personal. Yeah, raw. Very raw. Like you talked about everything. Mm. It was, no, you, you shared literally every insecurity that you've had on camera that everybody has some sort of experience like that, some sort of insecurity. You put it out in front of the world for thousands, hundreds of thousands of people to see, especially with someone with an audience like yourself. It's definitely not easy because people hide these insecurities or these, you know, challenges yeah. <laughs> to, you know, from their friends. And one thing that rang a fucking bell with me, and Farad was watching this, so I started losing my hair too. Oh, and watching true. your video, it was exactly how you experienced it. Literally, in the oh. shower. And, and by the way, guys, if you're watching this, go and check that video of Ben. We'll put it down in the, in the comments because I know so many people can relate. And you... you captured that so well the voices in your head you had that audio what am i gonna do now all that like i had those exact fucking moments Farah. and you know faraz was punching me while watching that video and he was like you see the feeling you see the feeling <laughs> he, he understand me you don't understand me i was like okay fine he was like you see he understands it he looks yeah <laughs> it's it's crazy what was that okay what was that like because i i initially like you wanted to hide it i didn't want anybody to know and yeah. i was just so scared of it but I didn't make a video about it, at least not yet. I'm talking about it right now. At least you, you have given me the bravery, you know, by sharing that. I'm sure you've done that to many other people, your fans. But what made you decide to be like, you know what? I'm going to fucking share this with everybody because I know I, it's going to help someone. Yeah, like I think the first thing coming to mind is when you try and hide your insecurities, you're always uh, kind of lying to yourself and you're, you're hiding a part of yourself that needs to come out. And I, I feel like by trying to hide it, you know, taking photos, turning in this direction so no one sees my bald spots. Uh, <laughs> like, I was just living such a fake reality of what my life actually was. And to embrace that, like, to make the decision to really just go the opposite direction that, like, no one would ever expect someone to do, it actually set me free in a way. Because, mm -hmm. like, I never have to hide it again. Everyone knows what it's like going through all that and what it's like to be me and be in those scenarios. And now... If I go walking down the street with my hat off, uh, people are like, yeah, that's Ben TK. He's like, he's, I know his story and I re like, I feel it. I understand it. And like, I don't, I feel like people just know me for that now. And I don't have to do anything to, to hide it or to seem better than I am. And, um, yeah, it felt really freeing after that video. It was, it was a feeling I didn't even expect. What was the uh, reaction was, like from, from your audience? Like like in the comments or did you get any DMs that like people say, yeah. hey, I feel the same or like... It was probably the most... It's been a long time since I've had a reaction like that from a video and it was like the most fulfilling uh, thing to see all the type of responses that came through and all the comments and um, just like even people who were feeling the same way and thought they were alone and didn't know what to do, didn't have anyone to speak out about. But now it's like encouraged so many people to just be like, ah, oh, fuck it. I'm going to talk about my insecurities. I, I'm going to like embrace this stuff. And it just, it made people feel like it was okay to just, you know, not be okay with who they were or like um, just to embrace that stuff. It, yeah, it was crazy. And I didn't realize it would have that effect. So um, it's, it's 100% just made me want to be more real 
on social media because I, I feel like we're missing that so much. There's only a handful of creators that talk about that stuff. And like everyone's trying to be like, hey, look at me, I've got no problems and I live the best life possible, but behind the camera, they're falling apart. And it's like, people <laughs> need to see Like, they need to see that more than the real shit. Like, I'm sorry, they need to see that more than the materialistic shit um, because that's what makes us all feel connected. And at the, like we're such a divided world because of mm. we don't show these things. We're actually all so similar, but we try mm. to separate ourselves so much in order to seem superior. So... It's it's a way of it's a way of making everyone feel like, yeah. So what? I'm successful and I make videos, but I'm just like you as well. And it's it could even empower people to be like, fuck, man. Like this guy's like me. That means I could probably do what he's doing. So it's empowering people to to reach the things they think they can't reach. So there's so much fuck. in it. Even stuff fuck, I couldn't man. predict, it, man. It's crazy. I'm Dude, gonna, I need to look my Mac real quick. <laughs> Dude, fucking fucking salute to you. For yeah. that, I, I cannot express how grateful I am, even though I've only watched that video very recently. But I've, I've, I'm, I'm so thankful because I know how many people can relate to that. I can relate to that, like, immediately. And, and it wasn't the only thing. You also talk about your love life. You talked about everything else. You literally just put everything on the table, no, man. No, the creative, the creative <laughs> block, like, like, you've been locked down in, in the city for such a long time there is you know subscribers are dropping views are dropping yeah. but like i think a lot of creators face the same challenge but everybody uh, faces every, the yeah. same challenge right like 99 percent. there's only the one person like maybe yeah. mr beast is like con constantly growing but everybody else like you mentioned has problems and the, the thing is the problem is when you turn up social media Everyone looks great. Everyone's like doing fantastic. And that's not the truth. But I'm not saying everybody should be negative. And your video was not oh, by any means far negative. Far from negative. Yeah, you know, yeah, it was, you were showing your journey and at the end actually talking about how you've improved things. You found solutions. So that means you didn't just sit on your ass and do nothing about it. You were looking for solutions and that helped you. And then you started working on ideas on how you can incorporate it into your work to make sure you're more creative. And I just love that the storytelling was so great. And again, just want to go back to the fact that the, the fact that you essentially went full raw was something that is going to earn you so much more respect in the long run. And mm -hmm. people are afraid to share that because they think, oh, wait, if I share this, if I'm uploading like a travel video, for, 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 for instance, and I share this, I'm going to lose subscribers because people don't care uh, or it's negative. But I think it's going to do the opposite because it's going to make people loyal um, to you because now they connect with you a lot more. Absolutely. And that was like a massive fear going into making that video. I was like, shit, am I just being an absolute pussy right now like <laughs> <laughs> sorry I didn't use that word, but like, are people gonna look at me as like weak and uh like uh oh he's just he's just saying all this so he can feel better about himself but in the end he's just you know um a, a weak person but like mm. no it was the total opposite like it's funny how people can look at it like that, but it's the total opposite like um to to even talk about that stuff openly is like the strongest thing anyone can do i think but yeah. every nobody people th feel weak thinking about it but when you like openly talk about it and embrace it and be like yeah this is just something i go through like that's the that is so hard to do and um yeah it's it's um it was definitely like halfway through making that video i was like i don't even know if i want to post this i'm like i put all this work in i'm like this is i was getting like anxiety i was like shit i'm about to reveal so much and i'm like do i want to do this is this gonna like plummet my career but i was like i had this like feeling or this this voice in the back of my head it's just like nah this is gonna people are gonna relate everyone goes through this stuff this is real it needs to be heard so um i just went for it and yeah i'm thankful i did it's one of my most favorite videos and i've never felt like what I felt making that and uploading it for a long time. It's sort of, and it's also put me on a different path for what I create now because of the feelings I got through it. So it's changed. I'm glad, way. I'm glad you did. And I love the fact that you made your anxiety and your problems cinematic too. At the same time, <laughs> yeah. you managed to fucking make that shit cinematic. I was like, wait a second, am I watching a movie now? Like, what is this about? Yeah. Is he faking it? <laughs> it was, it was just dope. But I, I, I'm glad you brought that up because I feel like you mentioned sometimes doing things that might not seem the right thing to do or um, they're scary, they actually might put you on a path that is leading you to exactly creating more personal content. And I, I, love, I love that.
I think being vulnerable in the right way is one of the biggest strengths you'll ever learn as a human being. Um, just being able to openly talk about that stuff and embrace the fact that it's real and, and everyone goes through it. And um, being able to talk on that level to other people as well is like such an important thing. And from all of that, it's become like one of my most favorite skills that I've learned, just being able to talk about anything with strangers openly and being really raw straight away and like where you should be doing small talk. Instead, you just like go straight to the deep stuff and they're like, damn, this guy's, I respect this person, you know, I wish, I, I, I look forward to meeting more people that do that as well. It's just the conversations are incredible. Um, and I think people should focus more on being raw and real. I mean, to, to what you feel comfortable with, but yeah, it's cool, man. It's, it's opened my eyes to so much. So I love that. We're, we're definitely learning from that. That's the, the, the hundred percent, our goal as well to be as raw as possible in the content we're creating outside of the podcast, uh, the day, daily vlogs, essentially, just to put everything out there and not filter anything as, as much as possible. Absolutely. You'd be surprised I mean, at the amount of help that comes in too that you didn't expect. Like people oh, can yeah? help you with stuff you're struggling with and actually give you an answer. And you're like, wow, I never would have found that if I hadn't have done this. So that's, it's crazy. That's actually yeah. very true. You're literally basically, if imagine if every person in the world could possibly know about your challenges and be able to help you. That's, that's essentially what you did. That's, yeah. that's why it's, it's so beneficial. I can only imagine. Yeah. Yeah. I got so much helpful feedback for like hair loss and uh, chronic fatigue and like, have you tried this? I had this for years and I did this and it fixed me. So I need to actually go back through the comments and like start researching <laughs> a lot of these things. But yeah, it's all there. The help's there now. And like, I never thought that would be a thing. So it's, it's incredible. People just want to help people, you know? It's mm. great. That's amazing. I mean, that was a ra radical decision that you made, you know, to, to put out that content. Mm. But I would say that wasn't your first time making radical decisions. You were, you know, starting as a cabinet maker, starting like being in a nine to five, quitting your job to be a full-time YouTuber and traveling the world, how would that decision, you know, what was the thought process of that decision happen? I would say th this is like eight, 10 years ago. Like, I don't know how many years has it been, but I think yeah. that was like, you, you made a video about that too. Yeah, that was like five years ago, I think. And um, I remember when, yeah, I, I think I was looking for a way out. Like I didn't want to be a cabinet maker for the rest of my life. So I was doing like, I was just researching all these things to make money somehow doing something I like. Uh, and then I came across, yeah, I came across YouTube and then discovered travel vloggers and they were really successful at the time. And like, I was good at video videography at the time. I was working at nightclubs and festivals and like building my skills doing that. Uh, and I figured out that all I needed to do was buy a one-way ticket to like Thailand and buy a drone and then just start making vlogs. And then I had a huge chance because it was really new and um, I had the cinematic skills to make it look good. So it was just, it was like when all the stars aligned and I was like, oh shit, I think I just found my way out. It was, it was like, I was so excited. I was like, I figured it out. And I was like, I, I was trying to figure something out for probably two years, you know, like, um, and yeah, that was such an adrenaline filled moment. And I was all in, I was like, it's, it's now or never got to make it work. So I took three weeks off, went to Vietnam and my brother and sister tagged along and yeah, we're there for three weeks, came back home and I spent like five months piecing together this travel video on Vietnam. I was like, this has to be five Vietnam. months. Hey, uh, five yeah. months. I was, it was like on and off. I took a lot of breaks. So right. I'd say full time. I probably worked on it for like two months. Um, what? But yeah, when I posted it, like it, it went really well and then it got shared on Facebook pages because they were big back then and they were huge for like getting your content seen. And a Vietnam page shared it and it just blew up. And then from there, I was just, I knew what I had to do. I was like, this is it. I'm a travel vlogger <laughs> 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 or a cinematic travel filmmaker, whatever. Uh, but yeah, I quit my job and then I was like, I'm going to Thailand and my boss was like, why do you want to go to Thailand? There's nothing there. And I'm like, you don't get it. And then <laughs> uh, I left. And then ever since then, like I've been producing similar style travel videos and they've always been doing quite well. And now I've built up an amazing audience that loves it. So yeah. And then getting offered jobs all around the world to do travel stuff. It's kept me, uh, keep, kept the money coming in to keep doing it. So it's, it's been, it's been crazy, man. Like 
it's so life is weird how it can go sometimes but yeah i'm so thankful for all that and thankful i found a way out of cabinet making <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm glad you did because we love your videos man and just about that story because i feel like everybody once at least once or maybe even a hundred fucking times in their lifetime have that thought that comes to their mind as they're working their nine to five as they're working on something they don't like um, they're repeating the same redundant task every single fucking day. They mm. come up with this thought of, hey, I think you should be doing something more meaningful, something that you actually love. Yeah. Yeah. And some people know what that is. Some people don't. I guess you were sort of lucky in a way that you were sort of in love with filmmaking. And that started with you getting your yeah. GoPros and doing the parkour videos. Yeah. And I, I think you made a Harry Potter video as well, right? Yeah. I, I think I saw Star that. Star Wars? Well, yeah. I remember the Star Wars video. Yeah. So all of those, that's how it started. But... When you were almost, you know, sort of done with your previous career and wanted to move to filmmaking, were you fully ready and confident to let it all go? You saved up all your money and you knew exactly what you were going to do or no? You were still shit scared. You had no <laughs> fucking clue. And you just decided, you know what? I'm going to take this. It's now or never. What Because for me and Farad, it's the second option. Like for us, you're like... We have no fucking option. Like we don't know if it's gonna work out, but we have no other choice. We are gonna fucking try. I wanna know how like how much of planning went into you before you actually left everything. Uh, cause some people might have, you know, maybe three years of saving in advance, some people might have two yeah. months, you know, and you're travel vlogging at the same time. It's definitely not a cheap sort of, you know, uh, option to go for. You have to travel, you have to buy equipment, and you have to be able to last as long as you can before you you make it on YouTube or you know, get brand deals. Yeah, so I mean, because I worked five years as a kid, I mean, I worked a lot before that too. I was working at like a $2 shop called The Reject Shop for like a couple, couple of years. And then between that, I was also a carpentry apprentice for like another two years. So I was like working, I was working on like Sunday afternoons and working full time as an apprentice. So I was just always, I was working so much and I wouldn't spend much on clothes or or nights out i never have those nights out where i spend like 200 dollars on like drinks um and so i was always saving money why were you looking at farhad when you said because that? i remember i remember i remember, fr- I, I remember we go out all the time it was like a big can of beer everybody just say because <laughs> no i saw you're looking at farhad i never spent 200 dollars a night when i go no, we, out we like never <laughs> spent 200 dollars a night it was just you know big can of beers beers the whole night right I mean, I've done it like once, but on the odd occasion. Uh, but yeah, like working so much and then working as a cabinet maker. And I had like such a cheap car too. I had like an old Mitsubishi Lancer. So I never spent much money on like cars or doing them up. I was honestly, I knew that I would need to make a lot of money and I would need to use it somehow on a passion. And it was like, I was always caught between that and buying a house because, you know, like everyone's pressuring you here to buy a house and start a family and get a dog. Everywhere, like, man. It's like the social yeah, fucking pressure. Most cities around the world, right? Um, it's yeah. just that kind of city comfortable lifestyle. So I was like, damn, should I, should I do that? Or should I just like spend it on something I know is going to be my passion and set me up for life? Uh, but I never really knew until like the time came to do YouTube. But uh, yeah, fortunately I had like a decent a lot amount of savings behind me because of like all my stinginess and hard work. <laughs> it, it all worked out at the end yeah uh so like when i when i did decide to travel money was like it was a scary thing to know i was going to be like dipping into my savings quite heavy, heavily like on flights and accommodation and food and experiences and everything um but i also knew that i could last for probably a year maybe more mm. if i traveled within asia Uh, because it's very cheap and Mm. you can do a lot of like things where you don't have to pay for things there like uh shooting videos for hotels and hostels and then Mm. sort of get free stay so i was learning that as i went along um but it was kind of my mentality was kind of like i've got to make this work or i'm going to run out i'm going to keep going till i run out of money you can always make like you can always get another job but you can't get another opportunity to and that in that time frame where things can work you don't have that all the time like it's so rare where that that comes up i'm gonna fucking coat that and and put it up on the wall i love that yeah you can always get another fucking job it's always like you can and it might not be a good job but you can get it but you can never go out and and you know do whatever you're doing probably not in 10 years time maybe you're not as passionate about it right absolutely like just work in a two dollar store for as long as you can save up until you know what you actually want to do and if you what you want to do 
fails and you run out of money, go back to the $2 shop and then figure it out again. That's like the only way to like live because you can't work at that job forever and be happy with your life. Like you got to find mm. a way out to do what you love. Even, even if you're just, just getting by, as long as you're stoked with the life you're living, you've, you're successful, you've done it. You don't have to make a million dollars. You just have to be happy. Like that's literally all it is. Um, and like, yeah, my goal was just to travel indefinitely making travel videos and like being, be able to keep doing it. I didn't care if I was like breaking even or like, uh, just make, I mean, if I was making a little bit of money, I would have been so happy. Um, <laughs> I, I was just willing to do that for the next two years of my life, you know, just getting, not losing money, but making enough to stay stable and keep doing what I liked, making videos, making travel videos and seeing the world. So that was crazy back then. And like goals changed so much over the years. Like now I've got new goals and that's not the same goal for me now. So like you have to get used to that as well. Like once you hit that pinnacle point in where you're like, I've made it, you, there'll be another moment when you're like, you need to make it again. So oh, yeah. You, so you, set another you, goal. Yeah, you, I think as humans, we naturally just get comfortable and we want more. Uh, so, But you, you can remind yourself that like, nah, this is a good life and I have to appreciate how far I've come and just be happy with that. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you'll always be pushing for more and you'll never be happy. So you've got to like eventually be like, nah, I'm good. This is sweet. So, yeah. Um, but, but can I ask you, like, can, we, can, can humans push more and still be happy? means push for more goals achieve more and still be happy in the journey or do you think the moment you start pushing because i mean for your videos like i mean you you had great videos going out i think the first one was a hit the first one was vietnam right then philippines thailand like all of them were, were big hits right up, right off the bat but do you think for other people do you think can they be happy and still pushing more uh i I think it depends. You have to define like a brand new goal that gets you really excited. And I think that's, that's what it is. It's a new goal that is like, damn, I, I want to do this more than anything. Um, and if it's something you feel pressured to do or like you feel like you have to do it, but you don't want, like you don't love it or, or it's not going to be something that you're stoked with in the end, then it's probably the wrong way to go. But I think it, you just, it just has to get you excited and you have to be like as passionate about it as you were before on your goal before. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I mean, you definitely need to do things you don't want to do to reach goals and that exciting goal. Like the first one, there was a lot of like, you know, organizing travel plans and all that stuff, all the tedious parts you don't want to do, but you gotta, you gotta do that. Um, mm -hmm. you're just gonna have to put in hard work. Uh, yeah. So but I think, um, yeah, it's, there's definitely two different ways to go about it. Like, you just got to enjoy the next step. And, like, it's like me learning 3D now. I'm, like, enjoying learning 3D all the way through. I'm, like, obsessed. It's like when I first started editing, the excitement. So it's like, I guess, let's just say that's, like, a new goal to be a master at 3D. Oh, um, yeah. that's that's a scary goal I we think have a competition Farrow, right yeah. here Farrow's let's feels go threatened right now <laughs> so tell us about your 3d journey right now where are you at what are you learning what's that sorry where, where, where are you at at your 3d journey what are you learning now is it blender is it like yeah, yeah i've seen screenshots yeah yeah it's mostly blender so i that was the first one i sort of came across that was like top tier editing software uh, and it's free, which is amazing. Anyone can use it and just start learning. Uh, it also has so many tutorials, so you can learn anything off YouTube to get started. Uh, so that's been a massive help and I've just been binging tutorials and uh, just uh, taking full advantage of what it can offer. And honestly, it's, um, it's crazy how much knowing 3D can change your storytelling. Uh, like, for example, um, like I film now a lot on my iPhone because I love sh not being invasive and just capturing real moments as they're happening. And like, if I want to put an iPhone footage in my videos, I'm like, ah, oh, it just looks like, so I, it does look like I've slapped iPhone footage in there and it doesn't look professional. So I'm like, how can I make this better? So I create like a 3D iPhone on a table and then just orbit a camera around it. And it's like, wow, that's a really cool effect, but I'm still using the iPhone footage. Um, and it's, yeah, it's, it's cool. It's, it opens your mind up to all these new things. So that makes it really exciting. Like it's bringing creativity to the next level, just knowing 3D. 
Yes, Faraz, yes, are fuck. you feeling? I'm just Faraz, white are you feeling? fucking <laughs> smile on my face because I know that I know it can help elevate everything you do. Because let's be honest, 3D, uh, especially after COVID, because that's the first thing we talked about uh, just earlier today. Um, during COVID, so many independent filmmakers. I'm talking independent because people. I'm, I'm talking people who are not even YouTubers, right? People who are just creating for 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 passion. They suddenly have no access to people, to money, to all of this. And their only place to go, and I know this because I talked to a bunch of people, was Blender. Especially because it was a free software, right? They started creating. They're like, you know, how can I actually start creating more? And Blender was like their safe haven, which is why if you look at the numbers of all these Blender tutorials, they've skyrocketed to like yeah, you know, hundreds of thousands of views. <laughs> are we wait? Are we wait? Wait, hold on. Wait, are we ever going to see a Bentike Blender tutorial at some point? <laughs> you might. You might. Yeah. Uh, oh man, there's there's such um there's definitely there's a lot of people asking for tutorials on everything I do right now. But it's such a hard uh thing to because I'm trying to make a filmmaking course. It's like, do I give this information away for free? And I mean, it's either way. It's it will work in my favor because um, mm. people will watch it and subscribe and I'll build a bigger audience. But then it's like, but then I can't really make any money to keep doing what I love if I give away all my secrets. So it's like, yeah. and I'm not afraid to say that. Like that goes through every filmmaker's mind when they're making a course. It's like, do I give away my information and grow or do I just spend a month, a couple months building something and then making a living and also being able to help so many people learn in a one easy to easy to follow course mm -hmm. um but yeah i might chuck out some like uh not generic ones but some good ones um that don't I'm, I'm, i think what would be amazing to see um is especially because you're so focused on creating all these beautiful stories as you're traveling and for example before your blender journey i believe like the 3d text that you had and you know the intro shots those were done in in, in Re resolve or after effects i just want to know um, like some of the earlier ones some of the earlier ones were After Effects. That was right. just using the 3D camera. And I think yeah. I ended up duplicating the layer like 20 times to get the thickness because something with, <laughs> there was something with Cinema 4D or something in After Effects where you couldn't add motion blur and it just gave me the shit. And I was like, it oh, I'm going to try a different way. So that's how I did it. And, um, but now I make all my 3D text with Blender because it's just flawless and it looks great. And you can track it into After Effects pretty easy yeah. as well you can even track it in blender if you want to and then put it as a png in after effects with the right camera movements uh, it's sick and you can put the, the realistic lighting from the environment around the 3d text so it blends in so well and it's like this is this is good i this, love it this is, this is the perfect <laughs> thing it's like guys quality we are talking about filmmaking why we are not talking about unreal engine I'm, yeah. I'm curious why we are not talking about Unreal Engine. Well, okay, so here's the thing. Unreal Engine is, for some reason, we've been having this discussion with Farhad. It, because it started as a game engine, so it's taking its time for a lot of people to understand, okay, it's much bigger than that. And that's what they're always doing. If you look at their, like, their news page, they're always talking about the top studios who are doing virtual production. And like very recently, like yesterday, I saw a hillside project which is an architect who had this dream of building like this really sick um, building in, 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 in Canada, in Montreal. They did it, but only half of it, right, because of the budget. And so they recreated the whole thing as imagined initially in Unreal Engine 5 to just show people. And so they're actually using all of these really random, when I say random, I mean just they're so different from each other, use cases of Unreal Engine 5. And filmmaking is definitely right up Unreal hey. Engine's alley. yeah. Especially with world building and the environments and the, what is it, 3D photo scans you can quick drag in of rocks and all that and cliffs. I, I, yeah. I can't wait to start using that. I haven't even started yet, but it's so exciting. I guess the reason why, I mean, Blender works really well for you is mainly because Blender is really quick to, 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 to play around with. Coming to Unreal Engine 5, just loading up a project takes much longer. But mm. Blender is just like you open it up for things like mixing it with the real world footage, which is a lot of the stuff that you work on because you're traveling, you're taking all this footage. Blender is, is much more than enough. Unreal Engine is where you want to 
like lighting try to create the whole environment in 3d that's when i think unreal engine will come into play uh and we'll go deep into that but i i want to quickly take it back to your workflow and process we talked about your journey which is amazing um let's go to story let's talk about that because you tell compelling stories in in all the videos you put out we're forgetting uh you know the transitions the really cool transitions the dope shots the color grading all that the story is something that is really important because if you don't have good storytelling, people are not going to watch and they're going to click away. So just talking about that, when you're capturing these places that you travel to, what is your thought process? How do you look for elements before you even go to the location of how you're going to you know, put in your storyboard to make sure that there's a, a beginning, a middle, and an end? Yeah, so I think the, the ending sort of it helps if it le- uh, sorry links with the beginning um and it, it creates a nice little uh throwback to the beginning which makes the viewer feel quite um uh what's the word i know they feel satisfied that it, it links and it's like oh that's clever uh but i think when you go on most of these raw trips out to the middle of nowhere you just don't know what's going to happen as well um so you can either go there's a couple ways you can approach it. Like if you're going to do a cinematic video with music, but you know you want to have an intro and you want it to be interesting, uh, it's something that you should spend time doing at home and then link it to the trip because you've got you need time to plan that sort of stuff. Like for the Philippines one, for example, um, before well, I had the idea before I left to, to do the getting sucked into the globe effect, uh, and like the Philippines chose me. That sounds a bit weird, but like, (laughs) I don't know. The place took me there. Um, So that was like, it was like me exploring an unexpected journey and falling in love with it by the end and then being absorbed back home at the end. Um, So that was something I I had in my head. So I had to film certain scenes whilst I was there. I think the, the two scenes I needed to film was me getting thrown onto a beach uh, so I had to like dive into the sand. It was actually really funny. We got some funny BTS on that, uh, and then film that properly so it would work uh, with the editing and post. And then the only other one was to stand on top of a hill somewhere beautiful, and then uh, rotoscope myself out and put track myself on top of the hill. And then um, it was like two shots I had to film, but all the work, all the hard work was done at home. So with those two things, whatever happened in the middle of that trip just went crazy, filmed everything and um, made it up on the fly because it was quite a run and gun trip. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what you're going to see. Like you have an idea of like the waterfalls and locations. So you can, you can definitely get ideas before you go there and know how to film like instinctively. Uh, but on the day, like you just make it up as you go along, capture what looks cool and then put it together in post. But then you've got the, the intro and the outro to give it a bit of juice. It's like, it's not just a cinematic travel video. It's actually like, a well thought out piece of art um and the other way you can go about it i guess is knowing you're going into it into the unexpected and it's probably going to be a cool learning experience or a story or something that you'll grow from compared to where you were before you went and then you can just base the story around that like all the people you meet the places you didn't know there was another world out there like this and then sort of um you can also anticipate that before you go on the trip, like you, it's, you can guess how the story's gonna go uh, and then write it and then try to capture for it. Or you can just let the trip take you and then write down notes along the way and then come up with an idea for a story whilst you're on the trip on how it actually went and then tell it as it was, but really, uh, really well told when you finish the video. Like it's, it's like a hero's journey, it's like, I think people love seeing things where someone something changes in someone throughout the duration of a video and you become a new person. And I think that's like really common in movies, you know, like the weak hero turns into like the unbelievable uh, strong hero at the end that you never would have expected. You know, it's, it's, it all relates back to that. So yeah, I think those are probably the best ways to tell your travel story. Um, yeah, I, w- I mean, the easiest way is probably just to go on what you experienced while you were there and then write it down so you can remember and then form a really cool story about it. So you try to storyboard it as much as you can, but at the same time, you leave a lot of space out for yeah. all the spontaneous things that could potentially happen. And then yeah. you add those all 
and so I'm guessing from that, the editing process, how does that work for you since you have all these things planned out and then you have all these random things from an entire, I don't know, sometimes maybe a week, sometimes two, three weeks of shooting. Can you walk us through that editing process from like start to finish? How long does it take? What, what's it like? Is it fucking chaotic or no, it's, it's organized as fuck? Oh, man. Uh, the first couple of travels, the cinematic travel videos I made, like Thailand and Philippines. Uh, now Philippines was a little more planned, but like before those, it was chaos. So <laughs> it was like you would literally try to have fun and explore as a solo backpacker whilst capturing all the most beautiful stuff you can, like taking days to yourself to actually capture cinematic footage and then partying and then uh, meeting people and just like experiencing what it's like to be a solo traveler. Uh, and then at the end of the day, you get home and you've got all this footage and it's kind of beautiful in a sense that you have to make a piece of art out of an unplanned set of clips. Um, mm. But yeah, it definitely becomes a longer process because you're constantly trying to figure out what's going to go together to be the most engaging and beautiful for a finished masterpiece. Um, but when you, the Philippines one, for example, there was a lot of effects and transitions that they were, they were planned whilst I was there and I knew what I was going to do when I was editing before I got home. I was like, yeah, this is going to be a banger transition or effect and I know how I'm going to put this together. It's definitely going to make it to the video. So when I got back home, I was like, I had like a, a set of things I knew I had to edit and that made up the bulk of the video. And then I just filled in the gaps with nice clips and other, other really cool effects and transitions I found whilst I was editing. Um, I think no matter how much you plan, you also have to rely on pure creativity to sort of like find like going through the editing process itself to find the magic sometimes and, and I think that's like the beauty of like creating like it's just the spontaneity of like uh discovering things and using your own creativity to see those things it's really nice as opposed to planning but um now I tr if I'm gonna make a banger video I try to plan as much as I can so when I get there on the shoot I'm not worrying about what I need I'm like I shoot two clips of this one place. I'm like, cool, I'm done. Um, and like, I can just relax and enjoy. And I think that's a hard skill to learn as well. Uh, mm. But if you can, it's just, it sets you free for sort of like having fun and filming at the same time, as long as you do the work beforehand, before you get on the trip. For sure, yeah. I, Hopefully I, that I think planning, that. what he's mentioning about planning, which is super important. Like when we even create our daily videos content, like this is not travel videos, this is just normal videos when mm. we talk about tech and softwares. If we don't plan, we have to take like 100 shots, editing uh. is horrible, like, it, like we are awake until like 2, 3 a.m. to edit those videos. But the moment we plan and the moment we know what to say, what shots to shoot, it's, it's much more different. But I want to yeah. know from your point of view, like how much of your footages make it to the final cut? Like do you throw away a lot of footage or no you will use every single one that you took and you want to use it and you want to use it somehow that's a good question because before in the day when i was making those uh run and gun travel videos like like three years ago uh, a lot of footage didn't make it and i always tried to cram as much as my favorite shots in as i could and sometimes it would be a bit too quick because i've obviously tried to squeeze things in but looking at the videos i make now i think the most effective way to tell a story and to go about it is to write your story, write your script, and then try to figure out what shots will match each part of the script, write them into a storyboard of like dot pointed shots that you need to capture. And then these are shots that are definitely going to make it into the video. Like they the story relies on them. So you go out and shoot them and you've got so much time to shoot them as well. So you can take your time and get them perfect. And most of the time, like 90% of these shots will make it into the video because you want them there. You've designed them to be there and they need to be there to flow the story that you've written. Um, so that's what I do now. I, this video I'm making, I'm making a video called, I don't know what I'm going to call it yet, but it's like living in Bali. Uh, and it's like, a, it's like a journey of coming from a city life to living in tropical paradise for like two months and everything I experienced throughout that. Do we get the accident too in that video? The motorbike yeah. accident? Yeah. It covers. Yeah, you get okay, that? okay. For anybody that doesn't know, can you give a little backstory? I mean, I, what I saw was on an Instagram story. You had a, a horrible accident, which you had to fly back to Melbourne, right? Your shoulder was broken. I or saw something. a middle finger to a pothole. That's all yeah. I saw <laughs> on, uh, on, the, on the Instagram. Damn pothole. Yeah. So it was like 
I was there for two months and I had two two days left before I had to catch a flight and fly. I was going to fly home and then fly back to do a visa run. Uh, but yeah, I ended up hitting a pothole with my scooter at night um, and we we're all so tired and like there was a lot that led to me just crashing into it. Um, but yeah, that was pretty, pretty terrible. Um, I broke my wrist and my collarbone pretty badly and was in a mess. So got rushed to a local hospital there, got checked up, got x-rays and then found out I broke some bones and then I was like, shit, I got to make the phone call to my mom. And that was, it was <laughs> yeah, everyone hates that phone call. Uh, it actually oh, went yeah. weirdly well, but um, yeah, I caught the flight home two days after. I uh, had to get flight approval because you've got to be careful flying with injuries. You can mm -hmm. like do yourself some 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 bad if you got the wrong kind of broken bones and that it can get medically complicated um but yeah i was good to go got checked off flew home and then i got surgery at home like six days later so i was pretty i was all broken for six days just waiting to go into hospital and get fixed up and oh man that was tough that was that was not a fun experience but i'm like pretty all right now like the injuries are mostly um, healed up. I can do a lot of the stuff I used to do. Just some tiny aches and pains, but hopefully they go away within the next year or so. Um, but yeah, that was crazy. That was a rough end to the trip, and that's all going to get covered in towards the last three minutes of the video. It sort of goes through what happened. It kind of doesn't show the aftermath. It just shows me hitting the pot. Like, I'm going to use Blender or Unreal Engine. Gonna oh, is that then, the bike scene I saw you post about on your story? That's the bike scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So That's I've genius. Made, I've made some animations because obviously we didn't film a lot of the journey, but it was such a good story. So I was like, shit, am I really going to spend hours in Blender creating these animations? And I was like, yeah, yeah, screw yeah, it. Yeah, I'm going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. yeah. That is where 3D comes to the rescue, yeah. people. I'm telling you, everybody, everybody, listen. I'm glad you. St I'm. I'm honestly. I'm. It just the fact that you brought that up. I'm I thought you were gonna to say that. I'm glad that happened. I was like, what the fuck? No, no, not glad that happened. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, come man, on. come on, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm glad you brought that up because I'm looking forward to just watching that specific part of the clip. I'm. I'm looking forward to it because it's. It's. It's just fascinating because a lot of the 3D artists that I see, they started as 3D artists, like myself. I was never a filmmaker prior to all of this. And seeing someone like yourself who is an amazing filmmaker now, you know, trying 3D and doing great work there, I, I, I just love to see your talent sort of translate from that world into the 3D world. And so I'm looking forward to that. Um, I want to talk about one thing, which is audio. So we talk about the visuals. Our last guest was... Um, Milko. Yeah, he was... He, he's all about immersive audio, right? He's from Woodville and they work on films uh, and on Netflix, music, all that sort of stuff. So we were literally spending an hour uh, talking about how important audio is. I want to ask you how important audio is in your work and how do you sound to, um, to essentially elevate the experience of what you're showing to your audience? And also, where do you fucking get those sounds? Because I'm going to need that. <laughs> Oh, and audio is so important. And I think every time I use it, I learn even more how important it is. It's like, it's the difference between making someone feel like they're there and just mm. hearing the sounds. Like if you do it mm. right, you put someone there and like they're in, in Indonesia or in Bali, you use, like you use realistic sound effects and like my brother, Jamie does it really well. Like he makes it come from one side of the head and going to the other as like something passes. Like he's so complicated with it, but it's like you're there. It's like, yeah, it's so realistic. And I think as like a, a storyteller, you want someone to be totally absorbed in your video. You want them to forget they're sitting on their chairs uh, until they're like, oh, damn, like that was, man, that video sucked me in. That was great. And I think that's like everyone's top goal as like a creator. Like just to suck people in and um, have that action. But yeah, I think audio is definitely, it's one of those things where like you need to spend 10 years just learning everything. It's like learning how to be a filmmaker and learning how to edit. Audio is like all of that in itself. And my brother reminds me of that all the time. He's, he's <laughs> working on his music and doing some complicated stuff. Um, but yeah, even music, like I've been going through so many songs on like, I've been using songs from 
like uh, my favorite artists because sometimes I just can't find the right royalty free music that I want on those platforms. Uh, but it needs to have the right emotion for the scene. So got to be so picky because you need people to feel exactly how it feels like or as close to within that scene. And even voiceovers, voiceovers is tough. Um, I think I learned a lot. Uh, it's funny because voice acting actually is such an important thing that comes into play. But it's weird because it's not, it's like, I think when people talk into a microphone, they try to sound as confident and as clear as possible. But the thing is, you you have to talk into the mic like you're talking to a friend. or yeah. And you've got to try and be a bit emotional in your voice, but not too over the top. It's got to be really real. And like you've got to be in the moment every time you speak about the moments and then feel the emotion through your voice. So like, I think I redid my voiceover like three times because I was like, nah, it sounds too synthetic. I don't like it, it's too forced. So I like went for a walk, had a coffee and I'm like, all right, I'm ready. And then I just spoke, you know, it's so funny, the draft voiceover I did that was just the template was better than anything else I recorded. And I was like, why, what did I do? <laughs> just like, it's cause I wasn't trying. I wasn't trying to act, yeah. I was just speaking normally about the experience and uh, if you can master that, you can really suck people in and get people to feel the emotion in your voice and um, excitement and help them be excited on the excited moments. Um, mm. Yeah, sound is like 50% of making a video. It's crazy. Okay, so I, I love that. I want to know, do you have the audio and sound sometimes prior to your edits? Maybe you listen to an audio or a music and you're like, holy shit. I have an idea about the visuals based on what I just heard. Cause I have that sometimes it happens to me. I yeah. find music and I'm like, shit, I know what this has to look like. Or are you the kind of person who always does the visuals first? And then you spend like, you know, whatever amount of time you spend to find the right audio to suit that. They always go both ways. I think it's like when you're sitting on a train listening to Spotify and then like a song comes on and you're like, Oh damn, that's perfect for a video that I've got coming up. And then you just remember it or you save it to a playlist and, uh, chuck it in and then build around that or like when you're working sometimes you search and you find the perfect song and you're like yes it, i mean it, you can't work it can't work one way or the other it always goes both ways like you've always got inspiration music that you um you take from something you've listened to and use that um but yeah you definitely have to rely on finding it afterwards quite a bit as well cause, right yeah, there's a lot of soundtracks for these storytelling videos you need. There's like it's probably seven or eight songs you need to put in there or, or just backing track. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I want to know. I mean, okay, you have your brother as well who is like <laughs> a genius at music, so that helps for sure. <laughs> Farad, why the hell are you not why doing something about this, man? Uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm curious, where do you... Okay, if, if Jamie's is not around, you need sound effects, you need music... Um, What's the website or place that you go to? I'm only asking this because, like, we fucking need it. I'm using Epidemic right now. Yeah. Uh, we've seen Artlist. You know, there's there's different places. What's your favorite place to go to for your sound effects? Um, I use Epidemic and Artlist. They're my main ones. Uh, and, I mean, sometimes if we can't get a sound, like, we try to record it ourselves. But that's just nothing. We, we never want to do that. That's so time-consuming. If it's a really specific mm. sound, we'll go and get it. Um but also, I used to do a lot of, yeah, well, I mean, Epic, Epidemic Sound and Artlist are my main. They're very good for finding, like, pretty accurate sound effects. And you can always, like, edit them to sound better as well. Uh, so those are my go-tos. But um, now I sort of, I used to do all my sound design by myself. And I was like, damn, like, that is another whole time-consuming process of the video. So now I actually get Jamie to do a lot of my sound design. And because he's so technical it's like he makes it sound so realistic um so like i i pay him to do that as well so helps him out with work and like helps my videos get done quicker and it's a win-win for everyone um mm. and i'd love to do the sound design myself but it's just i know i can do it it's just so time consuming i might as well offset it if it's something i don't mm. need to really focus on so mm. yeah that's just how i go about it now and most of those sounds are from art list and epidemic sound as well and from our okay. own recorded sounds where we go out to the forests and just 
record sounds for fun. Oh, yeah. I remember one time we went to a forest and you brought that device. Jamie brought that device. So he has this device that records the sounds in nature. It's so like when he walks by the beach, when he goes in, like, what the fuck was that? Isn't that carrying? the best way to do? Because, like, you got your own collection of sound. Definitely no copyrights, no royalties over there. It's just your own sound. And it's the most unique sound you'll ever get. You know what the coolest job in the world would be? I reckon just going out with a microphone to cool places and recording all these unique sounds, like tropical birds, waves, like that's such a cool job, I reckon. And then, dude, wait, sorry, go ahead. And then, no, I, oh, I wasn't really gonna say much else, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> dude. Oh, actually, since you br- brought it up, like, I mean, I, I was gonna talk about this later, but Nerf? you just talk, yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to do Nerf? You have to give a whole background story of how Nerf looked like because he has a drone. He's, I've seen him. Uh, was it that the FPV drone that you brought to the ma- the mountain that we climbed? Oh, yeah, that's you remember that starting? Yeah, FPV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Dude, so you, 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 yeah, okay. Let's, let's I'll start. say this. I want you to tell him exactly what we're talking about. But the reason why I'm saying it now is because you said that's the coolest job in the world. We're actually thinking of completely cooler switching job. something and doing this for like full time. And and it's it's something that happened by accident and. Uh, we uploaded videos about it. People are going crazy and I don't see a lot of people doing it. So this is like a secret. Maybe we should cut this fucking shit out. But, but <laughs> well, we want to do it even with you because, okay, okay. okay Farrah, let's you, let's tell, start tell it. Okay, this is, this is the collaboration that we might do actually. Leave it so, out for the viewers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what, I mean, if... Uh, and if, coin the term right now because okay. no one's coined that term. So, so, I mean, for the viewers who have seen our previous videos, we have started taking drone shots of different landmarks, whether it's oh, a mountain no or it's a... It's yeah, 3D it's photo mapping locations? Oh. No, 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 no. That, that is old school. There is a newer version of that. So basically, you take a video of a landmark. So it's a mountain or it's a building. You give that video to an AI tool. That AI tool can create a NERF file. So NERF stands for... Neural Radiance Field, which is photogrammetry on steroids. So it essentially keeps the lighting information in a way that when you move the camera around it, the, the, the lighting and shadow is not baked in. So it looks a lot more real in the 3D software. And So it's volumetric. And what you can do, and now you can bring the NERF file to Unreal Engine. Now you have your own camera shots. You have your own lighting. So you can add your own elements. So imagine... That's one great. orbit of a drone shot over a landmark. Now you have unlimited camera angle, lightings, oh. characters, anything that you can imagine. And we call it drone nerfing. That is going to be our job <laughs> from now on. No joke. Okay, so this is what happened. Um, we literally have a video about this. We're going to make you watch this. There was this guy. His name is Justin. Shout out, Shout to, out to Justin. He went to this really dope mountaintop, loads of snow, crazy view with the water. And we just saw that video online and we knew about the nerves we were doing. We were like, okay, we've never done something that big. Why, do, why don't we try like asking for the footage? Because we don't have a fucking drone. Um, and so we were like, let's just DM him. We DM'd him and then he was like, sure, I'll give you the video. Got the video. First try. We do the nerf. Dude, we got that whole fucking, it was just one orbit on top of the mountain. We got that whole landscape. Fuck. In Unreal Engine 5, in 20 minutes, 20 minutes, he did one orbit, and we made a whole cinematic video with dragons flying around. Like, we put the Lord of the Rings statues, our, the Argonaut statues. Dude, oh, we had, like, man. I think... For tracking, it, I didn't even think... Like, imagine trying to track that into a normal drone shot. It's just so hard. Don't even... No, no. It's not dude, <laughs> all you have to do is fucking click a button. That's all you do. You take the footage, click... Create the, 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 the landmark and the yeah. nerf is there. Drag and drop in Unreal Engine 5. You have unlimited camera angles. You can literally just create an entire movie after the fact. So you go to the mountain. You don't know what you want to fucking create. right? You don't know your shots. You don't know your storyboard. Come back home. Don't worry. Put in Unreal Engine 5. Do whatever you want. Okay, can I secure a collab right now? Ben, can we find a landmark in Australia where you can go and take a drone shot? One orbit. You give us the drone nerf. Yeah. We create the environment. We create the cinematic together. Oh, do can we do that? That'd be yeah. That would yeah. Be insane. Dude, the creative possibilities. Even just like if you did like a massive drone scan in Iceland or something, you created like a map. Can you imagine like a? F- you know how many times I've gone in and tried to create something from what Google's got that map making program, but it's still not perfect because it comes up with patches in the ocean and has Google watermarks and stuff and i'm like (laughs) (laughs) you don't want that shit in your fucking video man fly your drone for like ages and they've got like 35 minutes flight time now you can create 
a perfect map with dude rock. the video was one minute one minute long that, and, and it was a whole mountain range if it's if it's just let's say a building all you need is like 30 seconds footage dude, that's and scary. dude if you have a drone you can get that that's the thing and you know what's crazy no one's fucking doing it. Like, there's only a, a handful of people that are doing it. There's a, a guy that came to our Discord channel. He He's doing that. Like, we don't see a lot of people doing it because you need to first have the drone skills and have a drone. Yeah. Second, you need to be doing nerfs. You need to be interested in that. Third, you need to know Unreal Engine 5. So there's not a lot of people who do all of this and are free enough don't have like a full-time job to be spending time experimenting. Luckily, we quit everything and we can do that. <laughs> you know, the craziest thing about doing that is, I think I was watching like Corridor Crew and they did it with phones and cameras and mm -hmm. they shot it with a red camera and they said that the most, like if you have a camera that has cinema quality, you're going to get a similar cinema quality nerf. And that is... Mm -hmm. Holy shit, that is cool. I'm going to WhatsApp you the video that we made with that mountain. It's, it's, it's crazy. And I think it will give you so much idea because Melbourne has a lot of location. Yes, oh, like, of course. You, you fuckers yeah. were traveling all yeah, the time yeah, going so around. I was, I was so in Malaysia I, looking thinking, at your videos. I'm thinking you can take a perfect drone shot. Then we can think of a great cinematic. Yeah, dude, wow. it, we should fucking do it. Imagine like flying over the city in a helicopter and just filming an orbit around the city. And and you know what? We talked about this. Number one, not only can you never ever do that with that speed. I'm talking like 20 minutes of processing, 30 minutes. That's like thanks for my uh, shout out. Yeah, ten, you can never to do that. Sorry, it's like a 10 man job to do that. In like Marvel, Marvel Studios couldn't even do that and get it realistic. You know, and how no. what does it take to build something like that? And dude, that mountain has been like, I guess, sort of sculpted on top of Earth to that exact shape over millions of years. How are you going to sculpt that to that level of realism? I mean, yeah, you have to spend years to get it that close. And, and we're talking a huge area, right? All in 20 minutes. So whatever we just talked about, by the way, I just have to tell this to the viewers watching. I swear to God, this is fucking early alpha. I swear to God, please, <laughs> if you guys are watching this, go and fucking try this out. Learn Unreal Engine 5. Learn how to use nerfs. Get yourself a drone. All the, all of and, this. and for the drone, the Mini Pro Tree works. We yeah. tried with Mini Pro, oh, Pro yeah. Tree. You don't need a... Yeah. Even iPhones look fantastic. It's actually scary. You know, you know it's, the, I was going to say, like, the really cool thing about you guys discovering this is it reminds me of, like, it's one of those times where you're, like, you've discovered your calling. It's like when I discovered travel filmmaking, quit my job. It feels like one of those moments, and like yeah. I'm excited for you boys. It's like this could be this could be one of those things. So that's cool. we're gonna be drone nerfers, drone nerfers, man. drone nerfers. Drone nerfers. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine traveling around the world and doing that for a job. And you get to fly drones Dude. for a living and create... Okay, work. this was supposed to be confidential shit because I don't want other people to do it first, but fuck it. I mean, we're, let we're everybody do it. There are so much landmark out there you can do it. Dude, I mean. I'm telling... I was telling Farhat, people can make a fucking living out of this. You go out, you take your drone, you take shots, beautiful shots, not shitty ones, beautiful shots at different landmarks, and then you come back and sell them. And there's a guy on our Discord that's actually doing that. He's made a website, and he went to the Sagra Sagrada Familia in Barcelona, like different locations, which they have perfect nerfs. Now, you don't need to model that landmark anymore. You can use it in your Unreal There is a Ben TK a that is creating this film, and he needs an opening shot of the Eiffel Tower, he can get the nerf shot and then just take any angle that he wants and he doesn't have to go out to Paris to shoot that if he really wants it quickly. Like, that's a solution now. Yeah, that's insane. Oh, I want to take my drone out right now and try it. <laughs> <laughs> You've got... Uh, you. I saw you posted about the, the, the drone with the three cameras, the DJI. The, oh, yeah. I think that's the latest how one. How many Pro. drones do you have? First question. <laughs> like 10. Oh, man, I don't... Uh, how many? What's the answer? Oh, there's a lot of FPV drones, and then uh, I've been doing a lot of work with DJI, so I've got a couple of Mavic 3s that I've been doing. Couple of Mavic? Couple of Mavic. Couple of Mavic. Sorry, how many drones we got? Zero. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, man. <laughs> no, that's going to change next week. We're going to buy one. <laughs> We're thinking of getting one. Do you have any recommendations which drone to start out with? If you're going to do nerfing, I'd say, uh, I mean, I don't know what... I'm sure there'd be some benefits of having zoom cameras, but the, the new one that just came out, the Mavic 3 Pro, if you can zoom in and use that for nerfs, you're going to get so much more detail, like close up, mm. like ripples in brickwork and stuff. Uh, so mm. I, I don't know. You guys are probably 
be able to be more creative in that space with zoom cameras but then you've got the wide camera as well so you can choose to just capture those wide shots so yeah yeah there's a lot of possibilities for nerfing with that drone i think even stuff we don't know yet that's exciting i think we're gonna start with a small one just so we can crash it maybe if, yeah. we, if, we, if we have to oh like, you crashed many drones too i remember that how many how many <laughs> how many drone accidents how many have how many drones have you have fucked over uh what's that <laughs> How many drones have you fucked over? Um, I think like maybe three or four, or maybe maybe five. Mostly FPV drones because you crash a lot with mm. those. But then you can just repair them and then fix them, fix them and then fly them again. Um, I, I killed a Mavic three like a couple months ago. I, I had it set to the zoom camera and I forgot I took obstacle avoidance off and I flew straight into a cliff. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god this is a sad <laughs> moment for dgi yeah man holy like, shit ben 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 <laughs> i was like what i'm like oh where's my drone like, did you just <laughs> oh, uh -oh. <laughs> uh, it's okay i got a couple more in the house so we're good yeah, um she was okay okay let's 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 do something else i want to talk about i mean equipment related you have 20 minutes to pack you got a ticket Ooh. You're, for some reason, you just woke up. Oh, Your brother Jamie's got you a fucking ticket. You're leaving in 20 minutes. Damn. What are you packing in that backpack? Holy moly. Okay. Uh, I'd say for something so run and gun like that, I probably... Sony A7S III is just... It's a killer. It always does a great job. Uh, I'll grab some batteries for that. 24 to 70 lens. Um, I might grab... I might grab a 50 1.8 lens. So I've got some good low light depth of field. Grab my... I'll definitely grab my Mavic 3 Pro. Uh, so I've got my drone, I've got my camera. Um, it's probably, oh, I'll probably take my gimbal as well. So the, mm. those are the three main things I'd grab straight away, the gimbal. And then just make sure I've got all the charging cables for all that stuff. Mm. And that's all I should need really, ND filters. Uh, yeah, spare batteries. And that should be all good to go. A couple hard drives. Yeah, that's it, yeah. There are 20 minutes, man. Come on, come on. Uh, don't, you're, 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 calling, you're literally <laughs> taking everything now. <laughs> pushing the 20 minutes for sure. But yeah, I think like just the camera, drone, uh, gimbal. That's about it, yeah. Okay. So we got the Ben's essentials. I like that. <laughs> Ben's es essential list. Yeah. But I think, I mean, you have throughout your career, I think you have progressed a lot. But if someone comes to you for an aspiring filmmaker, a YouTuber, in 2023... What is your advice to someone who wants to be like Ben or who wants to start YouTube or travel vlogging? Um, I would say just just get your camera and go start doing it. Like I think what the hardest part is just taking that step um, and th overthinking it and not doing anything. But Because I, I see a lot of people talking about it, but no one puts it to action. And don't expect your first couple of videos to be the best in the world. Um, just go and have fun. Film what makes you enjoy it. Uh, like when I was starting, I was just, I was just filming anything I liked personally, not because of some, like stuff I'd seen from other people. I was like, I like this. I'm gonna shoot it. I'm gonna create this video in my way because um, that's what I'm enjoying. So make sure you're always enjoying the process and you're not trying to live up to unrealistic expectations of other people's work. And because I enjoy making the work I make it, but other people may hate making it the way I make it. Uh, so you've yeah. got to find your groove on what you like to do and the way you like to tell stories. Um, so yeah, I, I guess I'd say like, if you, want, if you know you want to be a travel filmmaker or a content creator, one, just grab a camera, get an, get an idea of some sort that you're excited about, just go do it. And then however it turns out is how it turns out. You don't have to plan everything. But you've just gone out and created something that you really like. And if you really like it, uh, you're going to put your heart into it. And people are going to see that. And they're going to resonate with that and be like, damn, I respect that. Um, so I think that's what it's all about. Just create stuff that you really align with and you, you're excited to create. And then people will enjoy it as well. Um, don't create for others. Create for yourself. That's a really important tip there. And something that gets lost for a lot of us creators because we end up trying to create for the algorithm or create what our followers want us to see but like you know art musician artists they change their music all the time they don't stay with the same music everyone changes their genres uh it's because they always want to try something new or they get exciting ideas so you always got to create for yourself 
and then your audi- your real audience, the ones that follow you till the end, they'll always be with you. So you don't don't worry about drop offs or anything. Just just keep doing what you enjoy doing. I think hopefully that's enough. <laughs> no, that, that's, that is that's more than good. enough. I we first of all relate to that because we're trying to do exactly that, and it couldn't be further away from the truth. A uh, further away, sorry, further away. No, it couldn't be closer to the truth, <laughs> not further away from the truth. Yeah. Um, it's just it's it's true because. I believe what you mentioned with the musicians, we see that with the best musicians, like you mentioned, they change their genre. We have been doing you know, daily videos for 63 days and we've changed every fucking day as to what we're doing, our, our goals. And we really started from TikTok. So we said one day that we are going to make one video every single day on TikTok. Day six, we are like, ah, I think our videos matches youtube way more than that yeah. like yeah. we switched to youtube and then we changed the genre we changed the style like yeah and, and it's now only six to three days yeah and all this nerf thing is just the past week right and it might change in like two weeks we might get a drone crash it'd be like oh fuck we suck at that we gotta change that now we can't do drone nerfing but in all seriousness i i really appreciate what you mentioned i appreciate the time you spend with us ben because yeah. you gave okay. so much value and this is by far one of my favorite episodes because not only are we close friends? We've we've hung out a couple of times, and I do miss you. I know Farad does as well. It's been a while since we've seen each other. Uh, we definitely have to plan something out to meet in real life oh, again. Yeah, for sure. It's kind of it, 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 soak up some of that warm weather. It's too cold here. Yeah. No, for sure. We should plan a, maybe a drone nerfing trip together. <laughs> Why not? Like, <laughs> <laughs> let's actually do that. That's no, let's actually do that. I'm, I'm dead serious, actually. <laughs> I I do not mind because I mean the, our goal is to just keep creating cool experimental content. We always try to uh, use the latest tech in AI in 3D and create around that, which is how nerfs came about. But we also have um, a passion for cinematic videos, which is why we love what you create. Uh, we're definitely not doing the same things per se. We're not traveling and making all these really cool cinematic videos. We're probably spending 99% of the time in the room and creating everything in Unreal Engine 5. But I guess they're all sort of lead to the same thing because we're trying to create experiences that people enjoy watching. And we appreciate you, especially because you also shared a lot of things that were personal and we don't usually get that and I appreciate that. So now that we are sort of done talking about your journey and your process, you talked about a filmmaking course. Let's not just talk about that, but also your future. Is there anything that people should be looking forward to on your YouTube, on your Instagram? What do you have planned? And also where people can find all those things in case they're interested. Yeah, so I mean... I guess like in the next couple of years, I've got a couple of ideas, nothing set in stone, but there are some exciting ones. Like, I mean, I've always wanted to make like a movie one day, like a proper like story. Uh, that's, that sounded funny, but like a proper, like a really good story put into like an amazing cinematic, something that you would see on Netflix. That, that is actually like Netflix worthy. Um, I know how much work that involves and how much money and crew and costs and skills. So it's obviously mm-hmm. going to be a really hard thing to reach, but that's an exciting thing that maybe one day I can achieve. And um, obviously I, I want to get that filmmaking course out as soon as I can. I know there's so much involved in getting that launched, uh, but I think that will be really exciting to to help people like just have one place to go to where they can create videos the same as me and get all these helpful tips, but in a much condensed and like easy, easily absorbable way and to learn in such a short period of time. Um, so that's, that's a huge goal. And then um, I think like after the masterclass and after getting like, all, I've got so much business stuff I need to set up because I've just been creating for a long time. I haven't really, uh, set up websites and things properly. So I need to do that so I can actually, I don't, I want to like not take client work anymore and just have money coming in and just be able to travel and then find out what I really, really want to do. Like have that Zen time, maybe go somewhere for a month and just like not take my camera and just like think and plan my next step and really make sure I know what I want to do and what I'm excited to do next. And yeah, I guess then venture on to the next giant thing, which could be making a movie or a, a series or something. Um, but yeah, I think I also want to enjoy life a bit too because like these are the best years of my life. I want to get all these 
financial and business things set up and then just go enjoy. And like, I think I was talking to Jamie about this today and I think like as an artist, we always start as a really excited, motivated creator. And then we get caught up in the success and the business and like the client stuff and making stuff for companies to make money. And it's all shiny at the beginning, but then your art changes. It's not from the heart anymore. And then you do this circle where eventually you make enough money and set yourself up by being salesy and doing all this brand shit you don't necessarily want to do. But then you, 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 you quit that and you go back to being an artist that now has money and can create exactly what they want again. It's like you, you come back to the beginning, but in a more viable way, right? It's like you you're just fucking just, just, you just we had the same fucking we had the same conversation and this is exactly what we did. So you know both of you're us we're working exactly a corporate like job, right? It's like a the an arc no, or something. No, this is something. exactly this, this what is we the did. exact same thing. So I mean I, I'm coming from a corporate background, same as Pharaoh's, right? We all I always wanted to do the things of my own. And when we started bad decision, that was the whole idea. Bad decision started, we started getting client work, and after a while I realized I mean, corporate world, I had one boss. Now with clients, I have multiple boss. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing the creative work, yes, for myself. I have, my own, uh, I have my own hours, but... But still working for them within their rules, like use this color, you don't say yes. this, do that. And then at one point of time, I was like, me and Farah were sitting there, we were like, let's just stop every single thing. Like, let's just not take any clients yeah. and go really hard on what we do and what we love to do and we think it will work. And we are like the circle that you draw, like we are exactly at like that at point now. Like at the very beginning of like quitting everybody and just like trying to figure it out ourselves, which I think is the scariest thing to do because now you're truly on your own and all you're depending on is people who would like to listen to your shit or, or watch your shit. And if they support you well enough, it's not about you monetizing them. It's, it's you monetizing the attention, right? That they're giving you in exchange for the value that you bring to them. Hopefully. It's like monetary support to continue inspiring people and doing what you want to do. It's, yeah, it's never like mm. taking money. It's always like a gratitude kind of thing, which it, like, yeah. you're always thankful for it. It's just so nice when... When people buy your color grades and LUTs online, you're just like, damn, like the person's like helping me continue to do what I'm doing. And it's just, it's so lovely. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I think, um, I think the hardest part in that circle is the point where you're getting all these amazing client projects where you know you should be doing what you really want to do now. And the hardest part is saying no to all these amazing client opportunities. And sometimes they're huge brands that you're like, holy shit, if I say no, am I going to ruin my future relationship with these brands? And it's like, it's such a hard decision. But I think if you're a creator watching this, you will eventually have to say no. If Nike reaches out to you and offers you a huge amount of money that's selling you out or making you feel sad or setting you up for three months of shitty, tireless, uh, like soul-sucking work, you can <laughs> say no and then work on your passion projects if you set up and have the money to do it. And like, mm -hmm. that's the most important thing you'll learn in this business is saying no. Uh, yeah, it's tough. It's not easy for sure. It's always tempting. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. It's a beautiful way you put it. And I'm sure everyone who's creating at some point will go through that. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you shared that, which is why I think for sure, I definitely am like, this is a fucking sign. We have to see a collaboration. I'm not even talking about like the drone footage. I would love, we were talking about this with Farhat to travel with you and Jamie and, and create something because like we have all these skills now that can work together to create something dope and we'll be, we'll be chatting to over anybody who watches Ben and, and watches us. If you guys are excited, we might make something happen oh, 100%. in the future. I'm going to plan that shit out. We are going to do it. Why not? Yeah, but with that, Ben, thank you so, so much. We'll put all the links of your socials in the, in the descriptions and um, I would love to have this chat again another time. Uh, yeah. No, it's been fun. Thank you so much. Buddy. I really enjoyed that. Um, I never get to talk about this stuff much and I'm surprised. Like, I forget I know all this stuff too until you start talking about it. Like, oh yeah. <laughs> no one else to really chat to around here about it except for my brother and that. So it's good. Thanks for pulling that all out of my brain. Appreciate it. No worries at all, man. We hope you enjoyed the therapy session. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but um, a big thanks to Ben and a big thank you to every single one of you who's been watching. We'll be back again next week with another episode. Until then, if you guys are curious about what we create every day, there's a fucking upload. Right? Yes. Go and watch them on our YouTube channel, Bad Decision Studio. There you go. We'll see you guys next week. Take it easy, guys. Ciao. Ciao.